Okay, so tell me who you are. I'm Randall Parr from Appleton, Maine. Okay, and you are working uh, with this issue uh, about the LPG tank. Tell us what that what uh, that means, what that's about. Yes, uh, Duke Conoco Phillips, uh, which is a subsidiary of Duke Energy and Conoco Phillips, is uh, proposing and trying to get a uh, 22.7 million gallon liquid propane tank built uh, in Searsport. And right next to a, a huge energy tank farm that contains gasoline, heating oil, and a number of other fuels. And uh, this is the largest proposed liquid propane tank in the United States. Uh, and it has gone through several levels of approval. There is a lawsuit outstanding right now uh, by, against the pyramid by the Maine Department of Environmental Protection. Um, it's been approved by the Army Corps of Engineers by Homeland Security, both of which refuse to have a public hearing, even though a huge number of people have asked for a public hearing. And right now it's before the Maine Fuel Board. And uh, when that, if that is permit is given, then the, the Planning Board of Searsport will consider that project and, and either approve it or, or, or turn it down. So let me uh, ask, what is the, I mean, I use uh, propane in my house. Um, I was told that it was a clean fuel, uh, energy efficient. Uh, wh what's wrong with, uh, wh why shouldn't we have LPG in, in Searsport? It's not, the, it's not actually the problem of propane, it's, it's the, the volume that they wish to store in one place. It'll be the largest propane tank in the United States, according to the Free Press a few weeks ago. Uh, over 23 billion gallons. There's no, absolutely no uh, uh, neutral zone between the people who live in Searsport and this tank. Uh, this is right next to houses. It's right next to a huge tank farm containing uh, approximately 122 uh, uh, atomic bomb equivalents of energy, gasoline, all of which are flammable and extremely explosive. Uh, gasoline, uh, uh, fuel oil, uh, diesel fuel, uh, kerosene, jet fuel, and uh, it's just a really, really bad location and a huge, it's too large a tank. There's no way they can put out a fire. The Searsport fire chief said if a propane fire starts, you will have to just let it burn. Well, if you let, just let uh, 22 million gallons burn, and this expands by 250 times when it turns from liquid to gas, when it raises, the temperature raises uh, beyond uh, 30 below zero Fahrenheit to like maybe zero or some higher temperature, the outside current ambient temperature. Uh, and so that 250 times 22 million is equal to 5 billion gallons of pro propane gas, uh, and which burns at 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This will cover a huge area of Searsport and Stockton Springs, and it will incinerate both those towns for sure. It'll start, uh, it'll incinerate the tank farm. It'll probably incinerate every tree in, inside and start a huge forest fire which will go in every direction. So four counties are probably under threat of uh, destruction uh, if this tank is agreed to be built. Uh, the, actually, there aren't really any good uh, laws that protect us against liquid propane. All of our laws, all of our regulations are in the Department of Main Department of Reg Regulation, Public Utilities Regulation, are all about uh, liquid natural gas, and this is not exactly liquid natural gas. This is refined from natural gas. This is propane gas. It lies like propane, butane, and a few other very, very powerful gases, which are three times, by the way, the energy content of liquid natural gas, which is largely like methane and ethane. Let me so, ask you this. You threw out a lot of numbers that sound pretty big, and I think people are either really uh, impressed by it or overwhelmed or confused, but if the, the destruction of those towns and that whole area and the incineration, I mean, that's pretty dramatic imagery. What are the authorities or the regulators saying about that? What's their response to that kind of risk? That's a good question. There haven't been any responses. We haven't gotten answers. Uh, there's been a huge, there is a website called thanksbutnotank.org, uh, and also for short, T-N, thanksbutnotank, T-B-N-T, dot O-R-G. Go there and you'll see 
that there have been a number of meetings of people and they've generated a huge number of questions to ask about this. And the fact is, the people who are applying for the permit have not answered the questions. They, uh, the word is that this has been fast-tracked. This has been fast-tracked by the federal government. The Army Corps of Engineers denied a public hearing. Uh, the, the Coast Guard denied a public hearing. The newspapers are not really printing the danger of this. They're pr printing a lot of very, very fluff stories, such as the Free Press interviewed someone from the National uh, uh, the Board that has to do with fire safety, who said that the fact that there's a huge amount of this propane makes it safer. Uh, <laughs> it just makes it more dangerous. It makes it less likely, I guess their point was, it makes it, makes it less likely to blow up. Uh, that actually the liquid is not explosive. Well, I, yeah, no, it's going to change the gas before it becomes explosive, and then it becomes very explosive. Okay. So it, the, the story is not being told by the media correctly. And why do you think that's the case? Why, why is this being fast-tracked? Why is this not viewed as dangerous? That's a very good question. And everybody should ask them newspapers, why aren't you printing this story? This should be the biggest story in Maine right now. It's, a, it's the potential d destruction of four counties, possibly, possibly more. What's your theory as to why it's not being? Well, uh, this is, these are very, very, very powerful people with lots and lots and lots of money. And they have expenses, they hire public relations, they go around and they, they convince people in some way to keep this quiet. And I believe that's being done. And okay. I, somehow I believe the media is is taking hush money and or something and some kind of intimidation to keep them from printing the truth about this. Okay. Now you mentioned the thanks but no tanks um, website. Is there some something else that people can do? I mean you've got let me just switch one thing. You've got um, people down here in the south who don't know a lot about this necessarily or can't vote in you know Searsport etc. Is there something that people from either in that area or away from that area can can do? Everybody should go to the main uh, fuel board, which is uh, under the... You can look it up uh, on actually bain.gov and find out what their website is, and find out uh, how to get in touch with them, call them or send them letters or send them emails, whatever, and tell them, this is an extremely dangerous proposal, please turn it down. And the main fuel board is now holding the cards on this is, is they're up or down. If they say yes, we're in. Very, it's very likely this will be built, and it's very likely there will be an accident. There are accidents every day. You see accidents about this kind of gas, and so it, we're in very, very dangerous territory. All right, Randall. Well, thank you a lot more. But I'm glad we had this part of the conversation. Thanks a lot. Okay. All right. Yeah.